Hey there, Akuma fans. Charlie with the Gossiker Application staff. Back after a long delay, but hey, you know what? Better late than never. Boy, it's awful dark in here. I can't see anything. There we go. Much better. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about Akuma macros. If you're not familiar with the way macros work, I have a few other videos that'll help you out, but I just want to address the difference between FANUC macro variables versus Akuma macro variables. So, hey, what better way than to join you online here and let's give it a little shot. If you notice up on my screen here, I have an example of the FANUC uh, serialization for macros. They use the uh, pound sign or number sign and then a number, a sequential number that comes after that to represent what kind of variable they're dealing with. And let's talk about the three that I have listed here. Uh, this may be a little redundant. Hey, if you already know this, skip ahead. What else, yo? So pound one through pound 499 on modern machines are local variables. And a local variable is designed as one that can have a set value when you're calling a program, but if you call a second program from inside of the initial program, that value will not be translated. In fact, you can give an additional value beyond that. Uh, even though the address is the same, the value may be different. So let's just take pound one, for example. If I do a subprogram call and tell it that pound one is equal to five, then from inside that subprogram, I call a second layer. I can then say that pound one is equal to 10, and it will equal 10 as long as you're in this subprogram. But when you revert to this subprogram, it goes back to a value of five. Plus, if you hit reset, that value is gone. Bye bye. It's it's toast until it gets reassigned. So that's, desi that's uh, designated as a local variable. The second variable that I have listed up here on modern machines, pound 500 through pound 799, is a global variable. What that means is if I set a value to a global variable such as pound 500, that number is going to stay in there even after hitting reset, cycling power, whatever. So a global variable is one where you're going to assign a value that's important to you and it will not go away until it is either overwritten or manually changed. So then we have the machine variables. The machine variables are, uh, they're designed to look at certain conditions on the machine, such as the current work offset, or the current tool offset, or the, uh, the RPM, the last RPM that's been called up, the last tool number that's been called up, so forth and so on. Just a way for you to, inside of a macro, tell the machine, or tell the program, go look at your brother, the machine here, and see uh, what work offset he's in. Or go over here and see what is the, um, the total length of the tool uh, offset, basically. So that is a machine variable. And I'm not even gonna get into how or why you would wanna be using those, but, um, that's uh, that's that's covered in another video when when we actually talk about what is a macro and why are we using it so those are fanic but we're not here to talk about fanic hey nothing wrong with a fanic machine akuma sometimes uses those those controls but the osp control is going to use the same concept but they're going to be slightly different Let's start in the middle with the global variable. So a global variable, it's not even called a global variable in the OSP world, it's called a common variable. And for a mill, it's designated with the letters VC. And we have 200 of them, so it would be VC1 through VC200. Well, let's go ahead and make that capitalized. There you go. Hey, yeah, we got to keep it right. 
So VC1 through VC200, and it is exactly as I described in the global variable category, these guys are going to stay in place until such a time as they are either overwritten from inside of a program or manually changed. Even after cycling power or hitting reset, these variables will stay in place. All right, easy enough. Where do I find them? Hey, notice the big cursor. If you've been watching some of my videos in the past, it's like, oh, what's he, what's he clicking on? What's he, now you can tell, right? So if I want to see where my common variables are stored or what value is currently in them, I'm just going to run over here to the parameter key and touch parameter. Depending on the way your uh, parameters are set up, you may have the program zero in, in item number one, or you may have the common variable screen as item number one. But there they are, VC1 through VC, all the way up to VC200. All right, so if in MDI, let's go back to the beginning, notice that I have nothing in VC1, but if I go into MDI and I assign a value of VC1 is equal to 1.2345 and I execute that, now when I go back to my parameter page, you're going to notice that now I have a value in VC1. And I can call that up at any time in a program by saying, hey, uh, G0 to X equals VC1 and it would go to x1.2345. Easy peasy, right? By the way, before I forget, I would also like to mention that on a lathe, an Akuma turning center, the C is dropped. It's V1 through V200. That is your common variable setup. They work exactly the same and you'll find them in the same spot, but on a mill, it's VC, and on a lathe, it's V. Easy peasy, right? All right, so that is our common or global variable. Now let's talk about the local variable. FANUC uses pound one through pound 499 on modern machines, pound 99 if your machine is older. But Akuma decided, you know what? Let's make it super easy on you for local variables. We'll give you the same kind of uh, structure. I can assign a value to a local variable and it will only transcribe to the program being called or being executed and then it will disappear erase bye bye but the big difference with akuma is that the osp control will look at any string of unrecognized characters and say okay that is a common variable so a string of characters charlie what the heck does that mean my favorite is to start with the letter p and the reason I do that is because I cannot use a recognized letter to start my local variable string. What's a recognized letter? Aren't they all recognized? No, I'm talking about G, T, X, Y, Z, you know, things that are uh, normally used in your, your part program. So P in general is not a recognized character and from there on out any string of characters that I uh, put after that letter are just going to be a specific variable so it can be anywhere from two all the way up to uh, four or five characters depending on your machine configuration we're gonna limit ours to four because I know that that works globally so P and let's just put in PCHZ. All right, that doesn't mean anything to the machine except to 0.345. There we go. It doesn't mean anything to the machine except, hey, wait a second, the uh, letters PCHZ all crammed together are just a local variable. 
So in my program, if I said PA, PCHC equals 2.345, and then somewhere down a little further, I just said G0 X equals PCHZ, where do you suppose it's going to? 2.345, boom. So local variable. You'll also see this an awful lot just as two characters. Like if you have the uh, call 0088 fixture tracking for um, four axis and five axis mills, you'll see PP, PH, PZ, two characters. Now that you know that, that is nothing but a local variable. It'll make a little more sense to you if your post processor punched out call 0088 px equals zero, py equals zero, so forth and so on. Now you can see that all we're doing is we're calling a subprogram and we're assigning values to the local variables that are being translated to the um, uh, to the individual macro. In this case, that's the fixture tracking macro call 0088. Clear as mud, right? Okay, so local variables. Now we have the final one, machine variables. This is where I just adore the way Akuma set this up. For a FANUC machine, let's just take the, um, the current work offset X0 you would have to know right off the top of your head or through a book what variable in between pound 1000 and pound 6000 uh, that value relates to. I believe it's 3202. You see, I don't even remember. I'd have to call out a book and, and look it up. But let me show you what Akuma does. I'm going to reach over to my other screen and I'm going to grab rip, Whoops, there it is. Let's get it off of the center. The programming manual for your machine. If you scroll down to the bottom of the uh, bottom of the manual, there is an index right there. Let's go up a little bit. Right after the table of reserved words, all machine manuals, programming manuals, have the table of system variables. This is just awesome in my opinion. What Akuma does is they use an acronym for all of the different things, the different variables that you might want to access from inside of a macro. So let's take for instance, what the example I just used, which was the X for the current work offset. Right there at the very top. Wow, that cursor is big. Zero offset data. V, Z of star, which is, is expressing your the axis that you want. So if I were over in my macro program and I decided I wanted to sample the current work offset in X, I could just say, well, let's, let's assign it to a local var a common variable. So we'll say VC1 is equal to V, Z, of x and then the work offset value. So now if I executed that, it would assign common variable number one, the variable zero position of the x axis for offset one. So that's what you're seeing over here is an acronym for the um, uh, for whatever variable you're dealing with. And I could zip through here and show you a bunch of different ones, but I'm hoping that you guys will look them up after we're done here. Tool length offset data, same kind of thing. VT of H, variable tool offset height, and then the, the actual tool number. So you can sample all kinds of stuff. Do, 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 do. Look at this, we got like seven pages, and this is the mill. The lathe has like 18 pages of system variables, machine uh, variables that you can sample and have your uh, machine respond accordingly. So take a look at that. You're, you're really going to adore it. And it's a lot easier to remember the acronym because you get your brain thinking V for variable, 
z for zero position of x axis for g15 h1 so forth and so on it makes it a lot easier to remember than just a pound number so I hope you this helps you out. I'm going to do a whole bunch of different macro uh, macro videos coming up in the next couple of weeks. So be sure to like and subscribe and keep in touch. And uh, I'm also open to listening to comments if you have anything new uh, to add to this. Thanks. Have a great one.